Carl has asked me to come and speak about having fun in what we do. Um, I don't think there's any real way of saying it, but I just love my job. Okay? I love every day. I have fun every day. James has sadly been through school with me. You see me in the classroom. I'm obviously serious all the time, but I'm literally having fun all the time. So if I can impart a bit of that on you guys into my ears, brilliant. Okay. So, which way do we go from? No, that's the right way. Okay. <laughs> so what do we do? So I literally just bring students up to Dartmoor Zoo on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Okay? We come up. Thursdays with the maintenance team, with Kim, with Kim, with Tim, okay. Tim. Okay. So with Tim, with Roachin, with people like that, we work with them on a Thursday. And on a Tuesday we come up and we help out the keepers. Okay, so we help out the keepers, we do some animal care events and yeah, so what? Okay, so what? What's that got to do with anything? So this is last week. These are two young ladies who have been excluded from school, who are ADHD and are completely and utterly mad and they're brilliant. So last week was the first time we had these two together, and it was like trying to hurt cats, it was hysterical. But they mixed concrete, they mixed cement as well, and they laid some bricks, and they made it very pretty, and they put their name in all sorts of things, and they had a well of a time. Incredibly, an incredibly successful day. This was the week before, when we did this animal care, and our students are sitting here, and the tigers, dragons standing up, sound those of them, okay? Massively inspiring for them. So, why am I talking to you? Okay, putting it bluntly, I was a lovely student at school. I was flipping awful. Okay, I was kicked out of school at 15, something to do with my knee and the teacher's head, something like that. Um, but I wasn't well behaved whatsoever. However, I didn't understand until my 30s why. Okay, there were things going on. So, usually Wilson was more destructive than constructive. I like that one, that was good, that stuck with me. And this one has inspired me. One of the rejections from universities, having getting fairly good grades and studying from home, head of the department told me, considering your background, your upbringing, you're not capable of doing A-level biology. So my reply, being a very well behaved student, was something at the beginning with an F, <laughs> and I'm going to get a B. Okay? Did that and that, went back, showed it to him. Very rewarding. When I got a degree, showed it to him. Okay? When I did other things, I'm more qualified than you. It was brilliant. Okay, so I come back to all that in my hand. All right, and this is something that has, has driven me all the way through. Okay, I come back with that in my hand and point it out to him. Oh, you told me I've, I've actually led you to you, mate. Get stuffed or something along those lines. Okay, so I've done a bit of studying. I study pretty much all the time. So, like most of you guys, I'm doing research all the time. I'm doing research on the kids that I'm working with. Okay, not in a weird way with test tubes and things, but actually <laughs> looking at what works. Um, I spent 16 years in mainstream school, bored, okay, in a lab, bored. Did the management route, yeah, bored, okay, it's not about kids, it's all about numbers, alright, it's so frustrating, okay, it's all about numbers, it's all about results, those times you had with the kids 20 years ago, you can't do that now, there's no time for it, so I just walked away from it, fed up with it, so, I'm now in an alternative provision, and I've been there for six years, seven years, Six years. Uh, and then we worked together for a year before that with a special needs school I was doing some work for. Okay? So we started this program and it was one of the mad ideas, wasn't it? And it's, it's, it's worked. So obviously that's she put a lovely face. She's so happy with that. Okay, so this is what we do. We're meant to provide an education for mainstream pupils that are permanently excluded from school. Okay, or at risk of permanent exclusion. Reality is a lot of schools are not permanently excluding students. This is why the numbers don't look too bad. Because if they exclude them, it's on their records, it looks a bit dodgy, so there's a lot of just shoving them off a little bit. There's a lot of things called off-site centres, where kids are not quite bad enough to exclude, but we don't want them in the classes. Well, let's stick them in these rooms. And these off-site centres, I couldn't think of anything worse. They're literally little cubicles, where the kids are put in there and they spend the whole day on their own. Okay? We've got kids who have come to us who have been in those for two years. They've had no conversations, no interactions with other kids, they've got no adults they can talk to, Two years they've been like that, and they're expected to become functioning human beings in sometimes six months. Okay, so we're actually the biggest multi academy trust for alternative provision in the country. I would say we're the best because we do some really cool stuff. But we're the biggest. We started off in Cornwall, we took over Devon, we're now in Dorset, Somerset. Whenever somewhere fails, we come in and take over. Okay, and we're all slightly mad. All right, it sounds like a hell of a job, it sounds like it's horrendous because I work with naughty kids. Jones. <laughs> I 
I'm one of them now. But I literally don't stop laughing and smiling. Okay? I have a laugh when I walk in the door, I have a laugh when I leave the door, then I go home and cry. <laughs> Quite often having that, and then just zone out and can't talk to anyone for about an hour. But you, I put so much into the day, so much energy involved in it, that it's fun. So, okay, what's it got to do with you guys? Okay. Sorry Liam, sorry Steve, you've seen this bit before, but I want you to focus on what we, what's changed. So, most of you have been in education, talking about ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. If you guys don't know about that, look at it, okay? It changed your, vision, it's changed your vision on so many things, it's massive. So they're now saying, 97% of students without ACEs, which I'll explain in a second, have no learning difficulties. They're fine, you're perfect students. You put them to work, they get grades. You don't have to teach them, they just do it, okay? So ACEs, adverse childhood experience. That can be abuse, that can be neglect, that can be poverty, that can be living in a household where there's domestic violence or arguing. That can be violence towards yourself, obviously. It can be household changes. Moving house is an ace. Okay? Moving home is an ace. Because you lose your security. Changing school is an ace. Going from primary to secondary. Actually, you're losing your support network. Things change. Um, if you get kicked out of school, that's another big one as well. So all the kids I deal with have normally got one or two and then they beat it down still. That's their support network, that's what they know, and it's gone, it's taken away from them. We've just lost a 14 year old, he's just gone up north, with over 20 aces. Okay? He'd been to 18 different schools, and no one could work with him. We were getting somewhere, he's moved again. Our average is about four, but that's because we get a lot of really nice kids. We get a lot of really nice ones. We get some monsters, they're up in the 20s, but we get a lot of nice ones. The significant thing with this is, is all this bit, okay? If you've got four or more aces, four or more bad things have happened to you, you're taking 20 years off someone's life. Eighth of the population in that situation, okay? Sixty percent of the population will have one ace. Of course we do. We're all human. We all have lives, okay? But what happens is, you're much more likely to develop depression. Suicide attempts, 14 times more likely to commit suicide. And in our job, we know that, don't we? You know, we've lost someone. Okay? Lung disease. Hey, What's that about? Okay? Doesn't seem to make sense. Drug use. All those things are all increased massively. And the reason is, and I love this, because when I first looked at that, I thought, yeah, what a load of waffle. Okay? But actually, the science behind it is brilliant. We all know about chromosomes. You've got genes, you've got instructions on the chromosomes. Your telomeres protect that. Okay? There. Hello. I probably have broken it. Come on. I'll <laughs> <laughs> drop it. This has gone wrong on the first one. Just you. Well, yeah, I probably just crushed it. So tell them is a protective layer over your DNA, over your chromosomes. Okay? And as we get stressed, those telomeres get shorter. Okay? I like to explain it as like you've got, a, you've got a chromosome, you've got DNA, you've got a condom over the end of it, protecting it, keeping it safe. And the more stressed you are, the shorter that gets. The older you get, the shorter that gets. So eventually you have an old person's telomere. And that's why our lives shorten when that telomere gets shorter. We get less protection for the genes. And what they found is actually students who've had three or more ACEs, that telomere is much shorter. It's like an old person, so much more likely to develop cancer. Okay? The good thing with it is, it's repairable. We can actually repair that telomere, and it's really simple. It's really straightforward. <laughs> is that what you've done to it, Andrew. <laughs> it's always me, isn't it? It's always you. It's not like you're in a technology there. No. That won't be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. James, your turn. Sorry guys,
some reason my internet's completely locked out. I have no idea why. <laughs> She then proofread, this is my copy of my membership that's good. <laughs> I'm a little bit dyslexic, I quite like and there will be spelling mistakes, so just ignore them for me. Okay, so what we've got is we've got this protective coat over the end of the chromosome. Okay, the younger we are, the longer that is. The older we are, the shorter it is. Okay, things like um, axle waffles, there's studies at the moment with axle waffles, I think they're telling me it's quite significant about them being able to regrow it. Um, the same with the immortal jellyfish. Tell a bit on that, it doesn't seem to get much shorter, as far as I understand it. Um, you guys will know more than me about that. But, if that's damaged, when you make new cells in your body, there are mistakes, there are problems, there are cancers, there's, there's errors. Okay, so how do we repair it? It's really simple, and it's what all of us who are parents, we do all the time. Okay, and those of us that aren't parents, we should be doing it all the time. We laugh, we play, fun. It's what this is about this, this week. It's about fun. Having fun works, but it works with your chromosomes. It helps repair that element. Good diet, okay, these are all things proven to recover those that tell me damage. Safe, warm relationships, having people you trust. Okay? Mm -hmm. Students come up here, you can see how James gets on with everyone who works here. Okay, big hug off Tim. Hello Tim. As soon as he walks in the door, okay? That relationship has to be there. Love and respect, kind of. Animals is huge, and this is where you guys can come into this. Okay, if you can get that students with animals, it's massive. All right, connecting with nature, structure. You've got to have a routine. You've got to have rules. If you don't have rules, forget it. You might as well, yeah. Okay, an environment needs to be nurturing and stable. Okay, the bottom one is quite interesting. We've been experimenting a bit with this, so you need a trusted adult. These kids need to trust someone before you can take them anyway. If you put them with people who are on supply, it's not gonna work, okay? I've just literally had two sessions with supply teachers. It didn't work, okay? If you try and take them and you don't know the kids, so my CEO was trying to get me to be up here five days a week with a different group from each of our schools. I don't know them, it's not gonna work. We need to know them, they need to trust us. If the students trust us, then when we introduce you guys, you're also then a trusted adult immediately. So it works. But without that, it won't work. So if schools are trying to dump kids on you, it's not going to work. Okay, so this was a few weeks ago. Okay, so that's quite a bit of damage. He's covered with Mr. Pickles. Okay, it's a favourite thing, he's Mr. Pickles. They all go and see him to have a cover. Okay, he's covered with Mr. Pickles. He's out in the countryside. If they don't know that enclosure, it's over there. Fantastic views. Okay, and quite often, and pretty much every time, our students want to go and see Mr. Pickles. Can we go and have a break? Push again. They go over there, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and they just sit, cover and think. And that's their head clearing. It's brilliant. Okay? Right, so phase one, and this is what we started with. We started by doing things to help the zoo. Okay? So we started off by digging in the little jobs. So we're hiding out the back, keeping out of trouble, because obviously there's a lot of swear words going on. That's me. Um, <laughs> but we're keeping out of trouble, okay? And eventually we started to do quite a good job of stuff. So we got some funding, we got some funding from the police through Tim, we got some funding from a Marder Centre, all different places, because actually people want to get involved with this, because we are changing people's lives, we're doing a big thing. So we started off by digging, filling, mixing concrete, simple things that the kids are proud of, okay? And then we went on to building a big area decking. There's an area decking over there, okay? Kids built that pretty much all their own. Support and advice, but that's about it. Climbing frame over there, we did a huge amount of that, it took two years. Round the back, we've done a couple of stores, we're in our second store at the moment. And what works really well is this. So don't just give them a job, okay? They get a job, they do the job, that's it. Give them a project, give them something that works. So how about this year have had, or last year, I'll talk about last year as well, they had the job of nice hilly area, nice slope, cover in brambles, you've got to turn that into a store for all our bricks. But you're only allowed to use recycled material. So everything was all them, all them planning. Okay, they're planning, they're thinking, they're designing. It goes wrong, but these kids have got no resilience. They believe they're rubbish, because everyone's told them they're rubbish. But if you give them a go with it, they take ownership over it, and what comes out really brilliant, because they're really proud of what they've done. 
They've got that sense of belonging, that sense of self-worth, which they're not getting by sitting in the classroom and being told you're not good enough all the time. Okay? This one was a good one. We spent two, two weeks, two days, of chopping down the tree. We were really quite happy when the tree went down. It was heartbroken, wasn't it? Okay? So, the other thing is we've got mistakes. If a mistake happens, these kind of kids have no resilience. They literally just crumble. Okay? That will involve either sort of throwing something, kicking something, walking off crying. We had a lad, a lad last year trying to put a step in on the step on the climbing frame over there. And he just went into tears because he couldn't put an out in straight. This is a lad this big, okay, big scary lad, huge criminal record for violence, crying because he couldn't put an out in straight. And laying there literally having a tantrum, a 16 year old. Okay? He came back next week, tried a different approach, it worked perfectly. He's got that resilience. Okay, it's coming. Okay, it's huge. So, most of you have been in schools, you know about all this. So, most of what we do, we don't really worry about that mostly in school. Most mainstreams are looking at this. Okay, they're forgetting those kids who haven't got that kind of life. So, the first thing we do is come in, have you had some food? Have some breakfast. Yesterday, on the way up to the zoo, I had three in the bus going, I'm hungry. Okay, we've got a roadworks down the road, we were late for school, we didn't get to give them breakfast. So they ate all their food, their lunch, and the bus. And then they were fine, but until that point they were awful. Okay, so the basics, some of our kids haven't got that. We've got students at the moment that aren't at home, they're running around all over the place. Okay, they're not in school, they're not, not on school often, but they're not in their houses, they're everywhere. They're in the bus stops, they're running away up to, one was up in Bristol last week. Okay, this guy's got nothing going on. But, we'll get that in. Well, actually, what we're doing at Zoom is up here. Okay? They're actually reaching their potential. But one of the things that you really need to do is this. Okay? I'm afraid Tim, Ben, Coral, everybody, that's what happens here that doesn't happen in school. Okay? They come up, yesterday they come up, they're desperate to find Tim to say hello, to <coughs> find Roshi to say hello. They belong, they wear uniforms. Not school uniforms, they wear zoo uniforms. And they're so proud of them. Okay? You'll be familiar with this kind of thing. <coughs> Simple learning, learn it, try to understand it, record it. GCSE science, what's the formula for carbon dioxide? You don't have to understand it to get the answer right. So why have we got so many qualifications, so many exams that are functioning down here? Whereas what we're doing with our kids, they're up here. They're making mistakes. We hit a water pipe. Hit the water pipe, everyone panicked. Spoke to the chaps, oh well, let's teach you how to fix it. Job done, they've now evaluated, learning, trying to find better ways of doing it. We messed up our corners on the hut we built last year. Messed it up completely, it wasn't square. So they've had to find a way around it themselves, okay? All right, academics. So one day a week we do the building, one day a week we do academics. And that's our phase two. Because really, that's what we should be doing, is getting the qualifications. We started off with unit awards. You guys can offer all of these. Please be aware that if you talk to schools, schools sometimes want everything to be about, everything coming to you to be about the curriculum. Well, this is part of the curriculum. Okay? Duke of Edinburgh awards. If they're alternative provision, anything they do in school counts towards Duke of Edinburgh. It it's not like mainstream, where it has to be outside of school. So all of our students, they're volunteering, was here. Their fitness is what they do in the gym. Okay, at school. But all the volunteering is here. And a lot of schools are struggling to do that because they can't find anywhere. So we've got level two animal care, so I'm teaching animal care as well, with everybody's help here. Uh, it's good fun. Sometimes we don't get much written work done, but we've got lots of cuddling stuff. There's lots and lots of cuddling. And yesterday we had a really good game of hide and seek. It's good fun, okay? But what's more important for those kids? Hide and seek, social skills, having fun. We're actually writing. No, let's just go and play. Do the right and look at us, which they did on the way back. Okay, so some feedback. So the climber from over there, this little lad, he designed the whole of the fireman's pole of himself. He designed it, he banned it, we cut the pipes, and then he put it all together. He was so proud of that. Absolutely brilliant for him. Really good. Okay? These are comments from some of the kids. I'm not going to read them, I'll leave them there for you. I'm just going to do my shoelace up before I fall over. Is that more embarrassing? So the bottom one there is about the staff here. All right. I wanted three or four quotes, but 
I spoke to the kids at school and one of them just thought I couldn't take any out. So here are loads. Okay. Has it worked for the zoo? I'm talking from the school. I paid by the school. Well, I wanted a job at the zoo, but I live an hour away. Family, long way, not going to work. Okay. So I now do a job where I do both. I work with kids who are in trouble and I work with animals. Okay. So, I look you. <laughs> okay, so we're digging trenches there. We've done things like press releases, lots of press releases. The press love it. Okay, everybody enjoys it. Zoo staff are always smiling when we come along. Okay, we're having a laugh. Again, it's so useful. Energy enthusiasm, the kids are so keen. Last Thursday, we're mixing cement, mixing, mixing cement and to make mortar. And the two girls, which is like, oh, hell, oh, this is so much fun. And we're just giggling because it was funny. They're mad. Okay, but you end up with people who go on to apprenticeships. So I'm going to embarrass James because we had him for three years. He was up here from year 9, 10, 11. And he was brilliant. And his confidence grew. Okay, James is one of the stars that we've had, but we've had so many. James went on to college. Instead of going on a level one course, they put him on a level three. And you were in the top four when you had 32 in your class. Okay, he's now got a job, he keeps his job, he's doing brilliant. And without this, it's good back, would it? Uh, he's been offered apprenticeships everywhere, our school's offering apprenticeships. The school's trying to get him back to give him a job, but he can't drive yet. And we're a long way away. So, you know, he's doing really well. It's good fun. These are kids that just need a little bit of a chance, and they bring so much happiness to everyone with us, don't they? We just have a good laugh and a good Okay? Right. That's going to sleep in. Has it worked for the school? Absolutely. Okay? This one here. Is a real challenge. A real challenge. Okay. However, she came up here just for one day. She's not ready for more yet. Just tripping her in. And she was brilliant. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't have had a better day for her. She hasn't had many of those. Okay, so the kids, more confidence, more self esteem. More comfortable with challenges. That's huge. Because life is a challenge. And if you're not comfortable with it, you hide. Something like 20% of alternative provision students go to college or get a job. Most of them end up as needs. Okay, so something like 80% of end up as needs. We're probably exactly the opposite, we're about 80%. I think for our new our zoo kids, it's probably 95%. All of them are in college. So Jamie's in his third year doing mechanics. And he's doing brilliant. You know, so they're all doing well. Main crew from every year in college, many students go from phase one to phase two, they come up, they get familiar with the building, then they want to study the animals because they love them. School, better behaviour, better attendance. We've got some students that don't come to school. So we say come to the zoo, they come to the zoo, but they won't go to school. So we've got two at the moment that come up here twice a week who do not go to school any other day because they're anxious. We've got kids that are kicked out of school purely through anxiety. So if you're anxious going to school, you then get kicked out and put into a behaviour school, how's that going to happen? Surely you're going to be anxious there. So we quite regularly used to pull up, or one of them, didn't we? Pull up outside his house, get him out of bed, drag him in the bus, fine, have a good day. We get better GCC grades, we get the best GCC grades of all of our academies. <coughs> we get more of their work experience. Um, we do quite a lot of martial arts as well, similar sort of thing. So we have them in the gym, we do a lot of martial arts. James has done how many belts? Uh, Seven. <laughs> Seven in school, wasn't it? I think you were about 12 now, weren't you? Yeah. So we do martial arts in school, James is carrying on training after school, which is good. And again, it's that confidence, it's that discipline, the resilience. Okay, so our students, they're a team in school. They look out for each other, they help each other. They're not embarrassed to make mistakes in front of each other, so we keep them as a class. <coughs> they stay as a group. Fitness is a big issue. And newbies, when you bring a new one up, they will last 10 minutes. And they've had it. And then the behaviour drops. It's not because they want to be naughty, it's because they're just knackered. So just do a 10 minute job, and then the next time a 20 minute job, or a bit later a little job. Okay? Um, hands on study. Again, all the quotes, I'll put in quotation marks because I couldn't leave them all out. This was nice. They get a chance to prove they can do something. This was them running a session for small kids. I don't know what they are, they're primary, I don't know. Okay, but they run a session for primary kids. And it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. People who didn't want to speak in public were speaking. Okay? Laying bricks. As I say, this lad's now a mechanic. Full-time job, works brilliantly, he's still tiny, still bump into him now and then, but he's gone on, on further. He's still at college, doing well. There's music last time I heard. I don't know if we're a little while, but most of them stay in touch. Okay, results wise, exam wise, this is what we built last year. We've put slides on it. 
Okay, it's a bit of a mess, but it's all recycled. It's offshore, fantastic. But it works, it does the job. <coughs> Results wise, did a little bit of study. These are two of my pets that I've taken to school. Okay, I take the tortoise in, the tortoise hasn't been thrown around the school, kick like foot or anything like that. It's just been cuddled. It does pee on people occasionally, which is quite funny. <laughs> this is Mowgli, who was born at the zoo. Uh, thank you, Ben. And Mowgli goes to school three days a week. Mowgli is always in school when I'm there, and all he does is gets cuddled all day. And the difference in the kids is huge. So if you look here, we grade our lessons by green, yellow, amber, and red. All right. On a normal school day, it's roughly 60% not perfect, 40% perfect lessons. Good lessons for every kid. So on average, we're a bit ropey. Right? That's what you'd expect. If I take the tortoise in school, bearing in mind it's only in the gym with me, it's not in every lesson. We all of a sudden, I know the data set smaller, but we see a swing. Behaviour changes just by having a tortoise in the building. The dog, massive. Okay? He's a big dog. Okay? But the behaviour is incredibly different with a dog in school. They get a cover when they walk in the building. They get a cover when they go to PE. They get a cover all the day. All the time they get a cover. If they're having a meltdown, go and see the dog. Okay, he's brilliant at sitting on their laps, which is he's 41k, so it's a bit of a squash. But when you've got animals in school, you can see results wise, a huge difference. Just think of what the impact is of having these kids up with you guys. Okay? Boy soaring, doing the animal care. I like the bottom one for this place. chill out, it's a lovely environment and that really helps me to calm, helps, helps to calm me down. When I feel stressed, I can just go to an animal, watch, relax and feel trusted. So they literally, we've got a deal, I have to, I give them enough rope to trip over and not to hang themselves. So if they need a 10 minute break, you tell me which animal you're going to, you go over and do it. If you mess up, if you don't have a fag or something like that, then you're not coming again, it's as simple as that. So we let them have that bit of rope and they don't often let us down, it has happened but it's not often. More confidence, they feel like it's their job, so they take a massive amount of pride in it. Okay. Some more research we did. Again, the green tables, yellows. Found out the best way of looking at how the kids change. Um, the one with the zoo, I think it's huge. So, if I've got the tortoise in, 57% good lessons. The dog in, 62, mix of the two. I did try guinea pigs, but that didn't work because they just we pooed on everyone and kind of freaked them out. Um, so yeah, the guinea pigs didn't work around me. But with the kids that have been to the zoo, we're looking at not much naughty behaviour at all. So you're talking about 85% of the time they have a perfect day up here, which is, and that's the whole day, it's not just per 10 minute session sort of thing. The whole day, they're nearly always perfect. We have mistakes. We have people running along with a pole and going, oh, shut up, you're. <laughs> and, okay, so they really enjoy it and they have fun and we have a laugh. Okay, so those ones get to learn something different every week. It's a break during the week, breaks them up. A lot of our kids, so the, the young ginger lad you saw earlier, um, he really struggled English, he couldn't read very well at all. So you're talking below a five year old for reading and writing. It was never going to get any better. He just couldn't do it. So you imagine him going to any lesson, write the date, write your name down. He just couldn't do it. So every lesson he went to, he's been told you're not good enough. Whereas he comes up here, can you just lift that up for us? Can you move that? Can you build that? Fantastic. He's now doing great. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it breaks it up. It gives him a chance to succeed. Zoo staff are really friendly. We feel welcome. We feel appreciated. Lots of us are anxious and very anxious about talking to new people. They go to McDonald's, they don't order anything. Hey, can you do this for me? No, you go and do it. They're too scared to talk to people because they have no self worth. The zoo staff, they feel different. Okay? The two young ladies last week, Rochi said hello to them, had a laugh with them. Every, the last two times they've come up, they've got to run and say hello to them. Just to say hello because someone actually appreciates them. We learn much more social skills. A lot of that's the bus ride as well. Um, sort of. Uh, and being at Zoom makes my week easier. And they catch up because, well, I miss a lot of lessons, but they catch up. They catch up quickly. 
I like seeing the animals, it helps me clear my head. And the bigger animals are really cool. I prefer the animal care stuff, because it's really calming, building is quite fun. <coughs> I like laying bricks. 60 odd percent of our kids have got autism. Strange that, they're all kicked out of school with autism. But 60 odd percent have got autism. Lining up bricks is fantastic fun for them. Literally, they love it. You know, can you order that stack? Workshop. One of them used to walk in there with another one who wants to do the same, walks in. It's fun and tidy. Alright, okay. Can I spend the day tidying the workshop up? Yeah. Okay. You know, use that OCD stage. Okay. Another one we've got to find a lot of at the moment is the impact of COVID has had a massive impact on our kids. I mean, ridiculous. That current generation that coming through, we've got the problem. And unfortunately, this coincides with a decrease in the number of kids being excluded from school. So a lot of, kids are trying, a lot of schools are trying to keep the kids in school because funding has changed. So Cornwall County Council, for example, have decided that they no longer have 250 kids going into um, medical school, not medical school, sorry, hospital, hospital school. It's now going to be 170. How? How do they know there's going to be less kids going in? So there are now 70 odd kids who are on mainstream roles who are no longer getting that provision into the hospital. With us, it's something like 600 kids and it's been dropped to 500. So those kids are having to stay in school. They're being isolated. They're not doing anything. So luckily what we do is now rolling out through Coral in other schools where the kids were about to be excluded. All right. So, what we're getting after COVID? Unbelievably, more students with complex needs. I mean, they're on a different planet. Some of the kids we get at the moment, I've just never seen anything like it. Um, I don't know how it's happened. I don't know what's happening. We've got one that literally grabs your leg and hugs your leg. It's about this big. It's like a Jack Russell in the room. And we don't understand what's going on. We obviously think of use, but this is far more complex than we can come up with. I've never seen kids like it. Particularly year eights and year nines. Special needs, they've gone from primary school to secondary school without being diagnosed because they've been missed. So their, their needs didn't show particularly in year five, year six. They've come up to secondary school, but at two years they've not really had an education. All of a sudden, it's so obvious. And we get kids with huge amounts of SEM, okay? But it's a different planet. More younger students, we used to be five classes of Key Stage 4, four year 11, one lot year 10, and then maybe three kids at Key Stage 3. We're now about half Key Stage 3, the younger kids that aren't coping in school. Isolation. They've got no idea how to be social with each other. It's all about online giving each other abuse. That's all they've had. COVID, a lot of them I was talking to them at school, so you know, what, what can you tell us about your time during COVID? I just want to start taking drugs. I'm bored. Probably 80% of our kids. Okay? Lack of resilience, because they've not done anything, they've not been anywhere, they've not experienced anything. Mental health problems. They're a mess. Okay? I put this young man here for a reason. Okay? Lovely lad, he's with for two years. He's a mess. All right? And that's all because he can't go out. He's indoors. This is the only place he will go and see me. Okay. So he's in college now. We've managed to get him to college. And he's doing really well. Okay. That one puzzles me. Kids in year 11 with low grades. So this time of year is when we all of a sudden get a lot of year 11s who are not very clever coming through. So on the scales of 1 to 9, you know, your new GCSE grades, these are all 1s. We get a lot of ones coming through right now. Funny enough, just before the um, census. So they come to us, so they're not on the school records. So we actually get a lot of nice kids this time of year, which is not very bright. And then they've got another A7 to them. Okay. Um, the group dynamics, we've had trouble with this year. So it's not been smooth sailing. As when I spoke to Leah and Steve before, we're struggling a little bit trying to get the group right. Because we've got so many high-end kids at the moment. But it's working. It's working massively for a lot of these guys. Okay. Okay, so top kit tips from the kids. You've got a bubble. If you're going to bring a new person on, don't bring them on as a permanent replacement or a permanent member. They've got to have a trial. You've got to see how you get on. Existing team chooses who comes up next. So when I've got a space, right, we've got who do you guys think will work? It gives them value and self worth that they think it's up to them. It's not really, but it, they, make, they think that way. Expect a slow start to finish, like we said. Train us. They want to train, they want to learn. They want to learn how to lay bricks. Ten minutes of one of the maintenance crew coming over and showing them how to 
mix properly, or I had to do the bricks properly, or I had to, have to um, put joints in post. It took 10 minutes. They love it. And they master it straight away because they feel good. Start simple. So simple skills, just digging, breaking, filling in holes. On Friday I'm taking another group. Didn't hear this. I'm going to Screech, Screech House Sanctuary on Friday. They've got some potholes in the car park. So I've got a younger group that's going to go up there on Friday and fill the holes in. And that's all they're going to do. And in exchange, they're going to see the mini cats. Zoo uniform is vital, sense of belonging. Work boots, raincoats, absolutely. Waterproof trousers, everything. Uh, what do they get? They just get a free drink. So on a Thursday they get a free drink. They bring money up to buy the drinks. Um, but on a Thursday they get a free drink. That's their reward. And they're chuffed with that. Um, sometimes we get taken to see the tigers. Okay, and their kids just love it. Okay, James got to come and watch us stroke the wolves. He went to stroke the wolf. He went to stroke the wolf. He did. <laughs> okay, um, I feel it, um, School staff needs to be involved. The problem you've got is you've got some staff that walk in and go, right, kids, get on with that. No good at all. Okay, we have to be in the middle of it. I have to be coked in mud. So if you guys see me up here tomorrow, I'm with a group tomorrow, I'm going to be coked in mud. Okay, I'm going to be filthy, alright? Because we have to get stuck in. A couple of TAs I've got up are very much staying there. Get on with it. It's your job, not mine. No, no, no. Get stuck in, get filthy. Okay? If they're not 100%, expect it. Have a breather. Sometimes they're not in the mood for it, but I'll be honest with them. Sometimes my head's not in. So I say, guys, I'm not with it today. You're right, I've had a coffee and just going to sit with the tigers. Yeah, we'll come with you, keep company. Let them know that we all have trouble. Okay? So, going back to the telomeres. What makes a telomere repair? Zoo are doing all these. You can't do anything about diet, that's not up to you. But are you letting them laugh and play? Yes. Give them safe, warm relationships. Absolutely, that's one of the biggest bits. And you find people who work with animals are fantastic at doing that. Love and respect, absolutely. You know? Nature, animals, structure, we've got a role, we've got a job. Environment is nurturing. And the last bit there, relationships are key to our health and ill health. That's my last slide. And I think that sums up exactly what we do. We've just done replacing these. And then actually, I'm just going to chill and do that. But how much good is that doing that young man, who is now a fantastic member of society? He lives in near the village that I live in, and to see him quite a lot, lovely guy. Lovely guy. He's a man now. Still. But he's a man. And he's a real good member of society. When we first got him, he was literally feral. So he was on, he was always getting hit by the police, always getting arrested, cleared, always getting tackled by the police and locked up. But when he first came here, he had no idea how to sit at a table and chairs. So he was on the tables. He was sitting on the table to have his lunch. And he was running from one to another, not being naughty, he just had no idea. He learned because it's actually, you can't do that, you're working. And now he's a functional member of society, a really good member of society. James, did you want to add anything? <laughs>